The BNFT this morning reports that closure of schools must be informed by medical uh, evidence, according to the Child Rights International. It comes with a photo of senior uh, Hotkusen Bright appear on the front page. COVID-19 fight faces danger as NHI is still indebted to local drug manufacturers. June inflation declines marginally ahead of policy rate decision. Professor Quarte of the ISE says still no room for a cut. The Daily Guide. No show at Mona contempt hearing. Veep hints rent digitization and GBC DTT order sparks fresh NPP NDC fight. Um, yesterday it was in Parliament as well. Baumia changes rice sugar butter politics in Zongos. Also, the daily graphic. Graphic do travel, uh, do Ghana travel festival emancipation day launched. Um, Police delegation in Yendi over divisional commander's expulsion and government releases 70 million Ghana cities to schools. Money for academic interventions, practical and technical examinations. Also, uh, the Ghanaian Times says that Bernard Mona faces Supreme Court on July 21. Increase in mobile money fraud, swindlers target financial institutions, Bank of Ghana's raised concerns and an alarm to that effect. Arrest prosecute persons flouting COVID-19 protocols, the Ghana Bar Association. And the four teacher unions demand closure of schools. We mentioned Nagrat, Nat, uh, Tewu and CCT. Will government hear them? Business finder, <coughs> control borrowing and expenditure, even as we fight COVID-19, experts caution government. And Ecobank Group wins stop Euro Money Award. Government moves to tackle uh, rent issues in new rent control uh, bill. My guest this morning, let's go on Zoom and check who's uh, I get new, two people trying to join. So let's see the waiting room. And uh, okay, uh, Pius and I'm Hajide is here. Okay, thank you. So Pius is joining us um, via Zoom. And also the Honorable Alex Ebefia, he is the, uh, the head of international relations at the NDC's office. Honorable, welcome and thank you very much indeed for your time. Hello. Hello, Pius, welcome. Hello. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah. yeah, thank you for having me. Can you hear me? Yes, you are live on TV. So we want to see you smile. Oh. <laughs> uh, say, Alex, I'm trying to work your... Okay, so Alex, welcome. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm good. Good morning to you and good morning to Pius and good morning to our viewers and listeners. Great. Let's begin. The uh, four teacher unions have written, um, you know, a strongly worded... Uh, caution to government, asking that schools be shut down. The Child Rights International says that this should be based on science and the evidence of same. Uh, this would be about the fifth or so um, body that is calling on government to shut down schools. Pius, is government listening? Well, government does listen uh, all the time and government consults and has consulted very, very broadly on the uh, easing of restri restrictions, including the opening of schools for our final year uh, students. And I, I agree uh, with individuals and institutions like the Child Rights International. Yesterday on the front page of the Ghanaian Observer, I, to, I also noticed that uh, a dean of one of the schools of the University of Ghana, uh, the Ghana Health Service, and even some Queen Mothers, uh, had also cautioned people to uh, move away from the sentimentalization and, if you may, uh, uh, the emotive uh, rather than logical uh, outburst that uh, we have been hearing over the airwaves relative to the closure of uh, schools or the call, the call for closure of schools. Uh, the, the fact of the matter like I did indicate, uh, is that broad consultations had occurred before uh, and that there are enough safety safeguards that have been introduced. And that is why out of the mm. almost 1.7 million persons who uh, are in school, and some of them now have been within these environments for almost a month already. Some, some have done a month, if, 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 if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. Some have done at least uh, two weeks. We have, we are hearing of about uh, how many number of cases, maybe even uh, less than 100. I'm mm -hmm. not suggesting that uh, one human life 
is not i mean it, it, it is is not consider, considerable no mm-hmm. but i'm saying that we should be led like the uh, institution you referred to said we should mm-hmm. be led by the data mm-hmm. and we should move away uh, from pressing of the uh, panic and emotive buttons mm-hmm. and we also have to communicate around these matters in a way to spread calm and not fear and uh, some of us uh, in the media uh, regretfully uh, uh, will have to plead guilty mm. to some reportage that rather seeks to uh, make parents anxious. We are we understand the concern uh, of parents, mm. but parents must be rest assured that uh, government has taken the steps and will continue to take those steps to safeguard the safety of our of our of our children. Mm. The 3.6 million face masks that have been distributed. The 1.7 million bottles of uh, hand sanitizer that has been distributed, the 50,000 and over thermometer mm. handguns that have been distributed, the several uh, hundreds and thousands of Veronica buckets, thousands of liters of detergents and soap and and so on that have been uh, distributed uh, are supposed to help the. Uh, students and teachers and even members of the non-teaching staff mm. uh, be able to uh, protect themselves. Uh, again, we have insisted that every school should be mapped to a health institution mm. that has been done. We mm-hmm. have insisted that there should be a designated isolation and quarantine or holding area in any school that has been done. Now, we are uh, ramping up on a supervision to mm. ensure that uh, all these things uh, are done at the at the the lower level, the the the, the implementation level, and so uh, there cannot be the argument. And in fact, I have just yesterday I was looking at literature from UNESCO. UNESCO has done some study on the situation that was in Sierra Leone mm. and elsewhere after Ebola relative to the closure of schools, mm-hmm. and has come to the conclusion that it may not be in the interest of the students themselves after all mm-hmm. for a prolonged uh, uh, closure of schools the outcomes in other jurisdictions uh, does not support that call and there has been a study conducted by a recognized international body such as unesco okay and they so, have, so, they, so Pai, they have sorry with the... all right sorry so what's the plan um the argument is that if we shut down the schools now it, there will be an educational disaster but what's the plan going forward? Because if I read the statement of the uh, Tewu, Nagrat, CCT, and um, Nat as well, they say in the closing paragraph that for how long can we stand and look while our children are consigned to imminent death? We cannot stand any unwarranted cat- catastrophe. Our children are our future and we must protect them. Nigeria has postponed final examinations and Israel shut the schools again when they were reopened and the pandemic started eating its students up. So Ghana can also do it and do it expeditiously. We should remember a stitch in time saves nine. What's the plan beyond the exam? Because beyond the exam, they will go home. We do not know when the virus is going away. Uh, I, I want to know what's, what's the thinking of government at this time? Well, I think that we can deal with the with the with the matter under consideration when uh, a decision is made is made relative to the uh, other issues that you raised about the general education and the general easing of restrictions. And I do have the briefing, and I'm advised I will I will be too happy to share with you. Mm-hmm. But having listened to the last paragraph that you read, right, these are exactly the emotive and panic buttons that we are. Uh, we are uh, warning against and that's what if you listen to the child rights international uh, carefully these are exactly the emotive outbursts that mm-hmm. we are uh, guarding against these are blanket statements that do not speak to any data mm-hmm. and they seek to uh, sentimentalize the discussion and to draw on the people's emotions rather than a logical uh, and scientific analysis uh, of the data and i just said to you that there is there is there is literature that that can be reviewed but mm-hmm. i shudder to ask uh, 
Okay. Are we suggesting that? Are we suggesting that mm -hmm. uh, use mm -hmm. that? Honestly speaking, the social distancing that we are observing in the schools, if we shut down the schools and we brought the kids back to the various communities where parents can send them on errands, like I've seen several students in the markets, I've mm -hmm. seen several students on the streets, even without face masks, mm -hmm. even without the necessary uh, social distancing. Are we saying, in all honesty, that when we close down the schools and we are, it is. It is supposed to be in the interest of the kids. Mm -hmm. That's the, the argument that we have been told. Are we saying that honestly, what we are seeing in our communities, the social distancing that is pertaining in the schools, mm -hmm. the discipline in the schools that can reflect in the observance of the protocols, such as the wearing of masks and all of those. Are we saying that when the kids rather come back uh, home, it is then that we can be guaranteed as a people, as a nation, that our kids will observe these protocols I am not too sure if that is argumentation. Look, there may be one. But, but, but I'm sure, I'm sure somebody, I'm sure somebody will also fire back and say that there are day students, especially the junior high school students, who go and come back from home on a daily basis, share buses and other public facilities with people. That could also be a danger to these children, don't you think? Well, that, I, 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 but the, the concept of the day students. Uh, is not to share, uh, to even take buses to schools. So the whole architecture uh, may be problematic if that is the argument you're making. When I used to go to uh, junior high school, I used to walk to school. Uh, the junior high schools are, are within the communities, largely. Mm -hmm. And so you will find very few uh, institutions, if any, that junior high school students will have to uh, 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 commute to school via vehicle, uh, on a daily basis. They are largely in our various communities. The challenge is with our SHS. And that's why if you look even at the, the numbers, the numbers of uh, JHS, they are far, far, far more mm. than the SHS because, because they are in our communities, there are several. Right. So that, 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 that is not... But the point I'm making, which I suggest to you that it is also worth considering, is that we should look at the discipline in the schools and the fact that... Uh, the students are able to observe the protocols even better. Mm. Now, number two, uh, growing up, I mean, some of us used to live in the same building in the same room uh, with our parents uh, with, uh, with our siblings. But our parents go out on a daily basis. Daddies go to work, mummies go to the market. And we know the situation elsewhere. So we are saying that, okay, we are talking in the interest of the kids. But these kids, we are saying they should come back home, stay in the same rooms with their parents, mm. stay in the same house with their parents, who will go out on a daily basis, and who also uh, carry the potential risk of uh, contracting viruses. Mm. Mm. I think that nobody is suggesting that, look, we have to agree that the, the risk of inf getting infected is here with us everywhere. It could be in the school. It could be at home. Okay. It could be at work. Mm. It could be in the market. It could be anywhere. Okay. So there is no there is no, there is no science mm. that is suggesting to us that the risk of getting infected is higher in the schools. And I am suggesting to you that the risk is even lower in the schools. Looking at the uh, uh, preparations and they, 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 uh, who and confirmed that, that who confirmed that to you? Uh, the Ghana Health Service confirmed well, that to you. No, no, no. I mean, we are, we are, we are doing uh, uh, logical deductions. No, I, I want us to speak you. to science and data. The president advised that we speak to science and data. Who confirmed that to you, that the infections are lower in the schools compared to the infections out said there that. of children? I, I'm just I, curious. I haven't, said, I haven't said that the infections are lower. Mm. I've said that the risk is everywhere. Okay. But the risk, in my view, is lower. But I'm asking, is it a Some scientific is it a scientific view? Because your minister for education, our minister says we should allow the scientists to make these calls. What you're saying, per your logic, per what you want us to believe, is your own thinking. I'm asking, is it backed by science and data? Yes, it's backed by science and data. It's backed by common sense that in an environment where people observe the protocols more, the risk of infection is lower, correct? Say again. Correct. So I'm saying that it is backed by science. It is backed by common sense. Okay. That in an environment where people observe the protocols more, mm. the risk of infection is lower. 
and oh. I've just established to you that the 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 the, 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 pro the possibility or the probability of in, in fact not the, the reality is that in the schools our kids are able to observe the protocols more then then they are than, crack girl, then they are crack girl situation the archbishop porter girls mauli mauko bishop herman a hunter man uh, all those schools shouldn't have have recorded cases then if that's that's no, no that's that, that that's rather simplistic the, the fact that the fact that i have made that statement does not mean that i have said the risk does not exist i said it's lower okay. and that is why out of the close to 2,000 institutions, even you, uh, with you attempting to play the advocate, uh, the devil's advocate, you are just able to mention but a handful. Out of the almost 2,000 institutions. Okay. Let, let's go. Mind let, you that. Mm. Sorry, let, let's mind give. you that. Mm. Okay. Sorry, let's give Sir Alex a chance also. Sir Alex, welcome. Uh, so, the, the unions are speaking. Tewu, Nagrat, Nat, CCT. I'm told also in the statement that was written by the four that the Catholic bishops of Accra have spoken and then the PTA council have also spoken. This would amount to about six or seven of the groups that are speaking. And I asked Pius. Pius says government will continue to listen. What's your view? Uh, is government listening enough? I do not think that uh, on this issue, the government is prepared or has shown that it listens uh, to some of the very, very good advice it gets. Let me start off uh, by indicating that this subject of itself is an emotive subject. And therefore, it will not be right for pious to say that people are getting emotive. When you already have an existing emotive subject, it is for the government to rather say things and put measures in place that will allay the fears of the parents, the teachers, and the ordinary Ghanaian that they are on top of and in control of issues that have happened. That has not been the case. And if that is not the case, then they should not blame anybody for being emotive because it is an emotive subject. Parents are worried, even teachers are worried. And you've got all the statements, which I will not rehash, of serious organizations saying that the children should be allowed to go home. Part of the reason for that is that the science shows that you start mm. with a small number, mm. but it increases exponentially. So basically, if you begin to get COVID in an area, if you do not quickly arrest it and disperse, what will happen is that it will ravage and spread very quickly. That is the science. Mm. It is also the science, and uh, Pius has quickly glossed over that, that one of the biggest uh, uh, social uh, protocols for COVID is that if you put people together, you have the ability to spread more. So the science is that social distancing, it should be observed everywhere. And that's Therefore, been done in the schools. COVID, well, we, I beg to differ. Why? One, when you, by the nature of being put in schools, you have people in dormitories. Hello? You have people uh, coming together Hello? in a. Pires, you are on. You are on. Stay stable. I, I, cannot, I cannot hear my senior. Oh, okay. Uh, well, he's live. You are also live. You may want to tilt down the screen of your laptop a bit so we can see. Uh, less of your headroom. Sorry, Senior Alex. Uh, let's try and fix this. Okay, but yeah. so, Pius, you're on. Yes, great. Senior, continue. Okay. So, when you have people congregating in a space and the government recognizes that for a church, there shouldn't be more than 100 people in that church. And if you're going for a funeral, there shouldn't be more than 100 people in the funeral. It tells you that the government is fully aware of the need for social distancing and keeping people apart as a very important issue. Mm -hmm. So by the very nature of putting people in a school environment, you are already testing or pushing the boundaries of that very same protocol. Mm -hmm. Now, 
the mixed messages also does not help. If you are so concerned about contamination of these students or infection of these students, that you come out openly and say that even when these students go into school, mm. they cannot be visited by their parents. They do not have access by their parents. Mm. But in the same vein, you allow these students to be registered under an EC program, which was never told to the parents prior to them going into the school. You then allow people like uh, Nana B of the MPP mm. to enter the school and begin to campaign or inform the students about the need for them to register and vote in a particular direction. Yet the parents cannot go and see their children, even when they are told that their children have fallen ill or in a particular school, there is been reports of COVID. Your point, sir. Which would that, pardon? Your point, sir. Where are we going with this? The point is the government is not taking steps to reduce the emotive position of parents and teachers. Mm. And the government's stance on actually uh, uh, pushing the issue of children in schools with the progressive nature of the disease once it sets in is putting our students at risk. The students should have stayed home. That was the position of the COVID team when we said, look, when you have a situation where COVID is rising, mm. it's not that we have hit a curve, it is stagnation, it is rising. So at the very least, hold fire till we get it under control. I also take Pius on when he gives the impression. But, 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 they, but they, sorry, but, but the GES insists that, look, if we shut down the schools at this point and we don't let the students take their exam, uh, we will have an educational disaster. For example, how do we manage it when we have a backlog of students who would have sat for their exam finished and moved on to the next stage? How would we have done that? Do you have alternatives? So, so I asked the question, is this the first time that students have actually missed a year out in school in Ghana? Is it the first time? No. I think this would be the third if it is done not even the second. So it is not unknown to us as a country. And but for the first time, this is the time that we are dealing with the health of our students. That's right. Our own children. And therefore, it's insensitive based on a rising figure of COVID to actually allow the students to remain. The Pius has also glossed over a lot of the issues that have been raised by these organizations. Mm. People have been to the schools. Some of them don't have proper isolation centers. Some of them don't have the necessary PPE equipment that have been set. Because you will notice Paris is being very clever. He says, we've made this uh, face mask available. Mm. I'm not interested in available. Have they gotten to the schools? Do the schools have all these face masks? Why is it that people are still coming? It's the same with the hospitals. Oh, we've provided 1 million PPEs. We've provided this. And yet when you go, the doctors and the nurses are saying, we don't have PPEs, we don't have uh, uh, the necessary equipment. So spouting out figures is different from whether the distribution is actually getting to where it's supposed to get. Okay. So Assuming. Let, let, let's, 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 Mr. Secretary, let's look at the brighter side, if you will, the data that the Ghana Health Service has provided for us. The recoveries are going up. Where case counts are going up, we're going past 25,000, but we have also have a lot of recoveries that have come up. That's gratifying. What is your recoveries what is your def are you talking of recoveries and discharged or are you talking of recoveries well the Ghana has always puts it together on the website and that is why i'm saying that look let us be very real with the position we are in ghana the information that has been given out by government is suspect it's suspect how i'm saying it that these are the facts how how is it suspect i occupy ghana even challenged the government on the figures that it had put out for the death rate. Within two days, the death rate had sprung up. Within two days of that challenge, it had sprung up. And we had been telling them prior to that, that the figures are not accurate. 
Now, Johnny, I'm on now. And yeah, yeah, you're on. I'll put you on. Mm. Sorry. The death rate mm. and the discharge rate are two different... Uh, sorry, the recovery rate and the discharge rate mm. are two different things. And the, 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 the uh, discharge rate does not of itself mean that the person is being found to have been cleared of COVID. Mm. It means that the person has passed a certain number of days, is believed to be asymptomatic, and therefore can go and self-isolate, and in the hope that he will not be able to spread. So, so, no so where do you stand in the matter of the students? Should they stay in school? Should they go home? What is it? They should go home. It's not a, I've said this already, that our position was from the beginning, that they shouldn't even have gone into school based on the science and the data. But we can't shut down, we can't shut down everything. Can we, can we shut down everything? What? Uh, please, please, don't mix up two things. The reason why we say that the school should be shut down is because the science says do not put people together and congregate them. Just like we said with the issue of registration. If you have an old ID card, why are you doing registration now? We are going ahead. The figures are not going down. They are going up. And there's a reason for that. Why is it? I mean, we have examples of the primaries of the MPP. When they, they went for their primaries, mm. we saw clearly that there was a spread within their own community. So, and that is not by mistake. It is because people congregated. Whereas some followed the protocols, others did not and could not. So there's a spread. And we are worried that with this registration exercise, many people are going to fall into the mix. Mm. It is, as Pio says, it's common sense. He himself used the word. It is common sense because basically you do not want a situation. So you can open up uh, businesses. People can follow certain protocols okay. because it's not, and you are not amassing people. Okay. But the moment you begin to <clears throat> amass people and put people under uh, the, the, the difficulties that come with social distancing, as they pointed out with churches, and funerals the same applies to the schools thank you and thank you Let, let's let's hear from pius pius so uh mrs Johnny. says uh this common sense must apply in all areas uh let me give you two minutes give him two minutes and then we can switch the topic uh is common sense applying here according to science and data? johnny mm. johnny uh my my senior colleague begins or ends with we should not congregate uh, and that uh, because COVID is here, we should close shop and shut down. At the same time, uh, his political party, the NDC, continues to congregate. Just a few days ago, the flag bearer was of the NDC was in my region, for instance, uh, gathering large numbers of persons who were not even observing the protocols. Mm. So uh, I think that he must rather pay attention to the... Uh, the, if, if I may, the misconduct that mm. uh, we may be observing across the board and we should be holistic in our condemnation. Mm. Now, number two, I think that leadership is about uh, seriously thinking through and taking the best options out of the lot of difficult scenarios that you may be confronted with. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is one of the defining characteristics of His Excellency Nana Kufado, as against uh, former President Mr. Mahama, you will notice that leadership is not being brought to bear. Mm -hmm. For me, it is rather simplistic to argue that, okay, COVID-19 is here, so let's close shop. Let's shut down everything. Okay? That's not the mark of a true leader. A true leader is one who will think through the issues and put in place policies and programs that will mitigate even in the worst of situations. And that is why, for instance, when we are talking about congregations, you will say that let only one third of the school population, which is the first year, second year, third year, the first years are not coming, the second years are not coming, but we can make allocations for the, the, the final years, which is just about one third of the school population to occupy the same space that the whole school would have occupied. Pi Pius, the gold, the gold track, the gold track uh, second years are also in school with their third year uh, contemporaries. So let's put that on record. It's not just from three well, schools. Well, I'm, 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 I'm speaking holistically. I'm talking about But the I'm, I'm also submitting to you that what we were told is that the form threes 
and some form, some part of the form two students will be in school. That's a fact. That's uh, no, but, but that's I, I'm saying, I'm, and I'm saying to you that on the average, that is just about a third of the school population. But if your argument and of a third is form one, form two, form three, adding a certain track or form two doesn't make it one thing. You have forgotten, Johnny. You just this is a small point which I think you shouldn't even have belabored. So because you have forgotten no, no, not about belabored. Just, we're, we're, you are, we're setting the record straight. You have forgotten about the universities. You have forgotten about the technical universities. They don't have gold track. So if I make a general statement like that, uh, we can allow me to flow. No, even no. I, I, only I, have I, I, I think that we should be fair to the facts. The fact is that in the secondary schools, form one, form two, form three. If we're talking one third, it's just form three. But if we add the gold track to it, it doesn't make it one third. That's that's it. You you did maths at UCC as well, so you understand this. But but I'm not talking just about the SS3. But never mind. My okay. general sense is that one third of the the population of Ghanaian students are in school right now, mm. occupying and use, utilizing the same facilities that the whole school would have utilized okay and so the issue of congregation is dealt with right because the classroom sizes have been reduced drastically the dormitory uh, uh, the dormitories they, they have been reduced drastically so we are dealing with that and i'm saying that look the one good thing that my senior said is that this is um, an emotive subject but but when politicians move in to take undue advantage of this uh, uh emotive subject mm -hmm. and want to draw political capital out of it what we need to do is roundly condemn it and i'm saying that if you are looking at almost two thousand institutions that have been in school on the average of for even over a month okay a total of about 1.7 million people and you have one or two infections what you need to do is to isolate those contact trees and treat those but to argue that the people the students should be brought in I've asked, for instance, has the NDC and the minority uh, paid attention uh, to the work, the, the wonderful work that was done by UNESCO okay. when Ebola struck in nearby uh, Sierra Leone and schools were closed down and what the UNESCO's okay. recommendation is relative to the timeline. But Pius, Pius, shut down. Pius, if that's the argument, then we should have not closed down the finance ministry, for example, BOST, Coco Board, we uh, haven't, GMPC. We, haven't, we, haven't, we, we should have just we isolated them because even they are adults with better sound judgment who could deal with the you situations are, you are, better you are getting the wrong picture we haven't closed down the ministry of finance if somebody tells you that it's not correct the ministry of finance just yesterday i was in the ministry of finance to do some work there are people in the ministry of finance who are working okay my understanding is that they 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 wanted to fumigate and human beings cannot be in the building when they do the fumigations and so when you ask people to go uh, uh, home for some time or go away for some time so that you conduct fumigations and you tell people who are yes, I'm talking I'm talking about a press release I'm talking about a press release I'm talking about a press release from these institutions Coco Board for example uh, Bost for example Coco Board has no shutdown I'm saying I have friends Bo in Coco Board who go to work every day Bost GMPC well now you keep shifting no John, no I'm giving you, you a litany I'm giving you a litany of state but institutions I am, I am contradicting you I'm saying that Coco Board has no shutdown Coco okay. Board, the statement, the press statement of Coco Board said that workers should stay away in their various headquarters for specific days for fumigation. That's not closing down. Okay. Let, let's go to senior Alex. Uh, but, but let me ask you a final one. Uh, the argument, I'm sure you've seen it all over, that we had say, we're keeping the students in school. Would they be allowed to go home after school when the exams are done? Is that question to me? Yes, uh, it's to John, you. Johnny? It's to you. Yes, it's to you, Pius. Yes, of course. Of course. They are in school for a specific purpose. And so you cannot keep them in school uh, beyond the, that purpose. So I think that begs the question. Yes, the students, really, we cannot keep them in school, in schools after they have done with what they are doing in the school. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sebefia, welcome back. Uh, you take a final on this one. I said two, but I gave Pius uh, a bit more because the interaction was on. But what, what would be your closing yeah, 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 yeah. Just make sure you give me enough time as well. Um, <laughs> you're, you're, you not bet, you can, you're not in power. You can, you, you can bet. You I, hear you, bet I hear you. I hear you. You can bet that you won't get interruption. At least you're honest. At least you're honest. Senior, you can bet that you won't get interruption. Bias, allow, allow. Yes, uh, Mr. Sebef, let's go. Let's go on. I think that uh, uh, the final question you asked is a very interesting question because some people have been going around giving the impression that the schools are better placed to look after the students, as Pius was saying, and they are safer 
uh, the risk is less, then they might as well keep them there till COVID is gone. Uh, I mean, you make a very valid point. Uh, but at some point, they have to go home. So, and you, you, they, they seem to think that the government is going to take the place of parents. And therefore, I think that uh, Pius's point about them being safer uh, when they are in schools rather than when they are with their parents who have been caring for them all these years, it, it's actually, uh, in my opinion, unfortunate. You shouldn't make those statements because a lot of parents will be hurt by that type of uh, 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 position. It's also, for me, interesting because at no point... Not that, the, that's not fair. You interrupted uh, me, Pius. Pius, Pius Yeah, but Bessina, Bessina, that's not fair. Me. Okay. P Pius. Uh, well, Mr. Mr. Sebev, you have, you have the floor. I've, I've muted Pius, so you have the floor. I'm, I'm very grateful. Yeah. <laughs> um, for me, I'm, I'm very clear because uh, when you want to make a comparison between an event or on a day as compared to uh, two, three events in, from an, another political party, in terms of, and I wasn't even making the point in terms of uh, MPP and this, I was making the point in terms of congregation. If you put people together long enough, you will end up with a spread. And I use their party as an example. And we don't want to fall into that position. That is, and I, it's the example that is clear and stark. I wasn't making it to make a cheap political point of MPP and DC. They know what has happened. And you're right. So if you, 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 you have to start closing down government institutions, whether for, for fumigation or because people have got COVID, just like cabinet is closed down and they only do Zoom conferences now, uh, and I'm happy that they've gone down that road, but they do not meet. So it is true and clear that whether for one day, three days, a week, government institutions have been closed down and according to Pius for fumigation. Mm. That is the position, and I agree No, entirely. my position is that they are not closed down. That's the position. They are not closed down. Not closed down for fumigation. Pius, allow, allow, allow the man to have his day. He you kept see, quiet for you. See, Pius. <laughs> Pius anyway, <laughs> let me go on. Let, 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 let me go on. Yes, yes. In the next now, minute, so we can take some messages and switch. The, the, the issue is very simple. People are concerned about their wards. The government says it, it would have done certain things in the schools there is a plethora of examples of those things not happening in the schools mm. with regard to the uh, PPEs, face masks. We've got clear examples of people who are falling ill and haven't been looked after and appears to have led to uh, uh, illnesses and subsequently, in one case at least, I know of the death. So that is one not, death not too true. many. Well, the, the death, we have not been told if the death was due to COVID or not. Not this recent one. It was okay. the one before. The, one well, well, the, Ghana the, Health, the Ghana Education Service has written a statement to suggest that that is not correct. So uh, we would want that to... That the boy who had a stomachache and died didn't die in a school. Mm, right. Or oh, he didn't die? Well, but not due to COVID. I, I'm, not talking of, I'm not talking of the recent one. No. There was one before. Okay. Yes, there was one did before. You, Johnny, did, did you say okay? Say again, but he's, he's making a claim. I'm listening to his claim. <laughs> what do you want me to do? You make, you make claims, I listen to you. <laughs> so, so we will make progress. No, okay, for me, let, let's, take, let, let's take messages, uh, Mr. Sigma, if you come back to you shortly, please. Uh, thank you. Etanam, welcome. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Hughes. As a few of your messages on WhatsApp this morning. Hi, Johnny. I do not think the schools should be closed down. However, governments should also stop sending people to carry on its parochial activities. John Avogbedo in Takradi. Good morning, Mr. Johnny and your panel. Ask jo Honorable Pius what scientific data are they using to let the kids stay in school. Let's stop cheap politics and put things in right perspective. Good morning, TV3. Please, I think government has made a mistake in initially by not testing the students and stuff before entering the schools from day one. But it is still not too late to test all students and staff on campuses to know their status. This will help in a way from Victor Rapture and Hope. Good morning. Let us treat uh, cautious, tread cautiously in dealing with our students with regards COVID-19. The lives of the students uh, matter. And so we must listen to experts and teacher unions in Ghana. Let's stay safe by observing all the safety protocols. And together we will triumph over this pandemic. Nano Kofi in Achimota saying that. Good morning, Johnny. Please, there's no social distancing in their dorms, in their bathrooms, when they go and fetch water. So Piles should know. By the way, who taught Piles? JHS students don't take vehicles to school. Some of them do. Uh, I think we must be realistic. 
MKA sent that from Mikropon. Kelvin in Asawa, Asawasi says, we have heard the president is in a self-isolation. And I know uh, the president is not an uh, IT who fixed the president's computers and other gadgets for the Zoom. If there's a second person in there to do that, then I don't know if I can call this group isolation. Scientists told us how isolation should be put uh, should be, but not what I'm seeing on the president's Facebook page, conducting Zoom and meetings. Dr. Baba Zamo, Master Planner, Junior Kintampu. Let us not rush to bring our children back home from school. Let us support and pray for them to complete successfully. Hi, Johnny. What are these signs and data that the government always talk about while our COVID-19 cases go up every day. Nanado and his uh, ministers, including other MPP sympathizers who uh, form the few should listen to the teacher union's parents and uh, the whole blame. Oh, okay. I lost, I lost, I lost, I lost this. Mr. Hughes. Mm. Okay. So, uh, yeah. This mm. one says, good morning, Johnny. The lives of our future leaders uh, doesn't matter to the MPP led by the visionless mm super incompetent president Daniel Kufuado is only interested uh, how to win elections not thinking how to save uh, life under COVID-19. Triddle said that good morning Johnny I want to get this clear will the students remain in school after the exams? secondly students with COVID-19 on the day of exams what happens to them please Pius can uh, you say what you are saying and now if one of those children were your Stephen Kwashiman Please, Sir Pius and his MPP cohorts to understand that the school environment defies the COVID-19 protocol since students are going to share educational materials like textbooks and also work in groups in order to prepare well for the exam. Simply uh, let them go home. John Major sent that from a shaman. Johnny, ha ha ha. In fact, common sense is indeed, is indeed, is needed, okay? Uh, sent a muzu, Oscar Solo, inside Agogo in Asante Akim. Eric Hakuna Matata in Kufuridia. Closing down SHS should, uh, would be detrimental to the lives of the students and their families at home. Parents must have confidence in the health officers as they treat all the isolated cases. Their precautionary uh, measures or the pretentiousness of NDC as though they care more about Ghanaians in opposition is sickening. Regards to Michael Autry, Befi, Eric Hakuna Matata, Center from Kufuridia. That we will pass here with the messages, Mr. Hughes. Okay, thank so you very much. Uh, to be fair to uh, Mr. Sebefia, oh, let's go to him. Uh, hey. Here is, is hey. closing. No, no, Pius, hey. Pius, Pius, hold on, Pius, hold on. Hey. Hold on, I'm watching my <laughs> clock. Sorry, hold on. <laughs> I'm watching my clock. Mr. Sebefia, let me give you a minute to wrap up on what you were saying prior to the reading of the messages, and then we will switch topics quickly. I'm monitoring my time. You're starting on the 51st mark. <laughs> well, um, all I'll say uh, is that Let's look at the signs of what is going on. You're dealing with an illness that people don't know very much about. You're dealing with an illness which we hope maybe by December, early next year, we may have a, a, a vaccine that may then reduce the fear and the issues regarding COVID. In this period, we expect our government to exercise patience and be a little bit more circumspect in making decisions that would allow people to congregate. From day one, we haven't seen this. I would like Pius to explain quite clearly what Nana B was doing in schools when parents cannot enter. Okay. These are the issues of emotiveness. Thank you. And therefore, we would, I would very much like that the students should be considered. It spreads very quickly. You have one, you have two, it goes to four. From four, it goes to eight, eight to 16. And within two weeks, you're in double, triple, quadruple digits. Look okay. at our national figure. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, COVID is not going down. Okay. Let's wow. Thank you. Thank you very much. Most grateful. Pius, wow. they, in 2016, the um, Akufado-led campaign team promised that they were going to make corruption a matter of uh, a felony rather than a misdemeanor. Yesterday, we learned in Parliament that the bill has been laid. Will it change anything? Well, before I get to that, let me quickly make the point that government has nothing to gain by putting students in school, but for to secure their future and to ensure that our academic 
system in this country is not imperiled. My senior colleague makes reference to earlier circumstances where our academic calendar and system was breached, sometimes during their watch. It was very unfortunate. And the fallout from that, we are not going to wish on the future of this country, that's our children. And if there are innovative and creative ways, even at great cost to the state, to ensure that we do not imperil the future of our children. We will children. not finish this topic. We will continue we'll, with this topic. We'll, okay, I'm just thank you. you. No, 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 you don't have the floor. Sorry. It's my time. Sorry, you don't have the floor. Mr. Sebefia, I don't have the floor. Uh, Pius, I asked you a question. Uh, you choose. I will come to that. I will deal, I will well, deal with it well, within the time. Well, we are, sharing, I, we are sharing the time. We don't have the luxury of time. I, I, I know. Mm. Just a, I know how to manage it. The okay. other one is tried knowledge. But I have to deal with some of the unfortunate uh, Well, but we, we need to serve our viewers as well. That's why. So we need to manage it. I know. It. So I will mm. deal with it within my time. I will deal with it. Okay? And then I also ask a quick question that now we are getting some infections in the health institutions like hospitals so because there are infections in the hospitals and health institutions too the argument will be that we should close down the hospitals or not and uh, it's instructive that uh, honorable secretary is able to tell us that by a certain time next year uh, we the world will get a vaccine i'm not privy to that information i'm grateful uh, that he has that information we, he will share the source with us uh, going forward okay. but on the issue of making uh, 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 corruption a felony, right? And for that matter, uh, attracting a higher punishment. That's right. I think that, yes, it will mean a lot. And I think that we have a president who is not just paying lip service to fighting corruption, it is this same president who established the office of the special prosecutor and uh, gave it all the necessary safeguards to ensure that it is truly and really independent. Number two, you look at the investments that have been made into the anti-graft institutions, including uh, the Shraj, including the Auditor General, who himself has testified and admitted to unprecedented investments into uh, his work. And you look at the practice of His Excellency the President to want to have each and every matter of or, or allegation of uh, corruption, no matter how frivolous, to have them properly interrogated by relevant agencies of state. Nobody should blink his eyes or think twice in getting convinced that we have a president uh, who is leading from the front and who is manifestly working hard to make sure that corruption, which is uh, a canker that destroys our polity and also uh, 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 um, impacts very negatively on our socioeconomic development, nobody needs to uh, uh, blink an eye uh, and I all are you, the are, you, are you able, Pius? Are you able to tell me one achievement, just one achievement of the office of the special prosecutor, which was created as a tool to help fight corruption? Are you able to name one? One? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are several. There are several. Uh, there are several matters uh, that are under uh, investigation. There are some matters that are. No, I just want one achievement. Instance. One, just one achievement. Well, I, if you say achievement, I, I'm not. I, I'm sure. I, well, I, achievement I is that. Achievement is that it's been uh, what three years, two years. Uh, the special prosecutor has been set up. You say it's been appropriately funded. The the man in charge is a good lawyer. We all know he has received allegations. Which one of them has he seen to a, a logical end in in the interest of fighting corruption? Just one. Well, Johnny, I, I I think that the office of the special prosecutor will, will, will be in a better position to give an account of their stewardship. Uh, I do not want to pass value judgment. You, you have you have no information. You have no information of a body created under your government as deputy information minister. You are asking me to share with you what you call achievements. Investigations are going on. For me, those are uh, a remarkable feat. Uh, prosecutions are going on. So, if you talk about achievements subjectively, I do not know what you are making reference to. Okay. But I'm saying to you that uh, it is not for the president to do the work of the office of the special prosecutor. His job is to create that office. So the conduct of the office of the special prosecutor is a matter that you can interrogate the office holder uh, for, but not the person who sets up the office. You cannot blame. The sense I get from the question may be that, okay, the office of the special prosecutor may not have done much. You cannot blame the person who employed but, you, but, Johnny, but, to but, 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 That's, that's not what I'm saying. Way. Maybe that's the inference you're getting. And those my final question to you. If, if you, for example, are happy to 
uh, communicate planting for food and jobs, one district, one factory, one million, one constituency, one district, one ambulance. You should also be uh, enthusiastic to tell me the achievements of the Office of the Special Prosecutor. I don't to ask us to wait for Mr. Martin Alamesi Benz, Kaiser Amidu, to tell us what he has done. Don't you think? No, I think that you, you, you are com comparing apples to bananas. Uh, again, I said to you that we have the legal and institutional frameworks that safeguard the independence of the Office of the Special Prosecutor. The interest that I have in the other things that, uh, and the involvement that I have as Deputy Minister in the other areas that you mentioned, I do not have that similar influence okay. in the operations of the Office of the Special Prosecutor. Okay. So, in conclusion, right. I am making the point that His Excellency's intent and his commitment to fight corruption is clearly manifest. And it is not just by word of mouth. It is by tangible action, including parliamentary legislation, mm. to confront uh, the, the canker and monster that is called corruption. He has had every matter, no matter how frivolous, he has had them investigated by relevant institutions of state, could be parliamentary, could be the police ID, could be all other institutions of state that are working to ensure... The, the president has been called a clearing uh, agent. No, uh, it is a, it is it is a serious uh, ignorance on the part of anybody. The president does not have the powers to clear somebody. Uh, it's those persons who have been, if you want to use the word cleared, those persons who have been cleared have been cleared by institutions of state with the proper mandate because the allegations against them in the first place were frivolous and unmeritorious. Thank you. And so, if you bring up a botched up allegations mm. and unsubstantiated and frivolous allegations. The, 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 the institutions of state will have no option but to tell the people of Ghana the truth, which is that those persons are not guilty. Thank you. Mr. Sebafia, step in for me now. The, the government promised in 2016 during the campaign to make corruption a felony uh, greater than a, a misdemeanor, to, to give stiffer punishment. I am asking what it would change, and maybe you would also want to tell me if you know any achievement of the Office of the Special Prosecutor and whether or not this government has paid... Uh, actual you know service to the fight against corruption uh, maybe i'll give you two minutes and then we'll wrap up on that sir two minutes again thank you very much first let me actually confirm and, and clarify uh, a point pious made i have not said anywhere that there will be a vaccine ready uh, by december or a vaccine er ready early next year i said there may be a vaccine ready in december or early next year and this is because I know there's a German company working. It was just like he reads, you should go and check it. And they are going to start human trials very shortly. Um, and the Americans are also working on the possibility of a vaccine. And it's a race between the um, pharmaceutical companies now to see who is going to be able to come up with a viable vaccine as soon as possible. Uh, there's even talk of the type of vaccine where it might be not one where when they give to you, you can leave for you can leave it for another five or ten years. They are saying that it will have to be one that is possibly okay. going to require. Let, and I, no, I have to talk about. That. I just wanted to be clear because it's a very. I don't want anybody to go and report that Sigbefia says that. That, that point. That point is clear. You have not said that. That's what you say. Now let's okay. talk about corruption. What would this change? Um. Well, the reason why I'm not even worrying too much about it because this is a very short topic for me. Um. We have many laws on our books, many. I, for one, don't un understand why even uh, we needed the vigilante law. Because at the end of the day, the act of vigilantism is, can be covered under the criminal code on specific criminal offenses, possession of firearms, assaults, etc. They all exist. So you can actually deal with people um, on laws that existed already. We've passed the vigilante laws. We've heard of a shooting in Bandar. We've heard of issues happening uh, across the country just on registration. These are being carried out by individuals <coughs> who identities have not been fully cleared. We don't know whether they are real military. We don't know who these people are. <coughs> and it's important <coughs> that the laws <coughs> are brought to bear, especially with regard to these type of offenses. Okay. At the moment, mm. we do not believe that passing a law will make a difference All right. whatsoever in 
how the government has been treating issues. Okay. We saw Ayawa Suit West were born. Even if they came up with the white I, I, paper, I think you're not talking about corruption. You're talking about violence. Uh, and, and, and I'm talking about law. No, I'm talking about law. You're talking of a passing of a law and what the effect of that law will be. Right. And I'm giving you examples of the passing of a law which has not changed anything. Thank you. Most grateful. Why, why am I deviating? Most grateful why indeed. Thank you. The gentleman who have joined me via Zoom this morning, Mr. Alex Sebefia, he is the head of international relations of the NDC and also is a member of the technical team on COVID-19 on the side of the NDC. And also the Honorable Pius Enam Hajide is a deputy information minister of the Republic. Let's